Hello, I hope I find you well and in today's Lightroom Classic Quick Tip we're going to be looking at whether we should use folders or collections. So without any further ado let's jump across to Lightroom Classic. So here I am in Lightroom Classic, I'm running version 11.5 today and I'm going to ask you a question. Have you shot film? Do you shoot film? And a suggestion that Go and go and go on. Go and buy yourself a little film camera. Shoot some film. It's a great experience. Good learning curve. Anyway, the reason why I asked that and said that was in the film days you had negatives, and they came in a little plastic sleeve, and we had our prints. And our prints we put in frames uh, on our bookcase, on our mantelpiece, on the wall, on our desk, on our windowsill. But our negatives went in the plastic sleeves, went in a box, under the bed, in the closet, in the loft, in the garage, nice safe and sound. And that's actually the principle of using folders and collections. Because using folders you should only use them in four instances. Yep, in my opinion, you can disagree with me, that's fine, you should only use them in four occasions. And the reason why is your hard drive will fail. It's not up for debate. At some point your drive will fail. If it's a solid state drive you'll, read, you'll reach your read write max limit. If it's a mechanical drive it'll just wear out. Just like your brakes on your car. It'll wear out. So the less wear and tear that we can choose not to apply to our drives, the drives will last longer. Simple as that. So when should we use folders? Well, the first one is on import. So we hit the import button, and I'm just gonna go through the user interface very, very quickly. Left-hand side is the source, where they're coming from. So that's your camera or your media device. The middle is the images that you're going to bring into Lightroom. How are you gonna bring them? Are you gonna copy them? Are you gonna move them? Are you gonna add them? The right hand side is what you're going to do with them as you copy. So under file handling, renaming, apply during import, and then the destination. Now it's good to have a strategy for how you file your images. Because if we copy them from our media card to their final resting place on your drive, you'll never ever have to move them again. So let's say you are a narrative based photographer wildlife, birds. So you'd have perhaps a folder structure, wildlife, birds, eagles, and you're drilling down the folder structure, and then perhaps you might have golden eagles, and then the last folder will be the date they're captured on. So there's all your pictures that you took on that day of golden eagles. Nice, simple to find. And the reason why we do that is, let's say Lightroom crashed or your whole computer went down and you lost your catalogue, although you should back it up regularly, you could use your operating system if your images are kept on an external drive. You could use your operating system to go and manually find an image if you desperately need it whilst you're waiting for a new computer and rebuilding your catalogue from your backup. So having a strategy of where you put your images on import is really good. I have a workshop at learnlightroom.co.uk all about importing images and strategy and automating your process of importing. It does a lot of things for you, allowing you to spend less time in front of your monitor. So if you'd like, go and check that out. So <clears throat> we've looked at now where they go, the final resting place. That's the first time you use the folder structure. So I'm just going to press done. The second time we use the folder structure is when we've culled our images from our collection. And I'll come on to that in a second. So I've culled my images, I've gone through them, I've chosen the ones I like, what I don't like, and I want to mark that folder that I've culled it, a visual representation. So I go into my folder panel. I find my drive. As you can see, I've started to color label these folders. 
So this folder here isn't, and I'm going to mark this now as I need to cull that folder. Okay, so I now come down to color label to be culled. Gives it a red label. I know immediately I need to cull those images in that folder. Okay, and I come back to that at a later time. So that's the second time you use the folder structure, just to mark it that those images on that day have already been culled, but we cull them in the collections, and I'll come on to that in a minute. The third time that we use the folder structure, once you've culled them, and perhaps 10 or so days after you've culled them, you go to the folder structure and you delete your black flagged images if you use flags. You can only delete a file and image from the folder structure. Okay. If you delete from a collection, you are only deleting the image from the collection. You're deleting that link. You are not deleting the image, the file itself. Okay. And then the fourth time you use the folder structure is if you've imported them incorrectly or you want to tidy up your um, strategy you've gone from they're all a mess uh, all the images are everywhere they're all a mess you've now worked out strategy and you need to move them so it's import marking the folder as culled deleting um, the actual file the photo from your drive and moving them those are the four reasons why you use folders everything else you do in collections and this is the reason why so we're now going to going to my collections panel and these are eight images that of garden birds that I've got in the collection so I've just imported them shall we say I've added them to the collection and there we go and the first thing I should be doing is picking and rejecting them so let's just I press the tab button so I've expanded them I'm just going to quickly increase the and I'm going to put the shift locks on or cap locks on so I've got auto advance on P for pick, X reject. I've got a full video on this playlist all about picking and rejecting. So I'm just going to pick, X, X, pick, X, pick. Okay, so I've culled them. I would then at that point go to the folder structure and cull, uh, mark this folder. So I, I would click, right click on an active image, go to folder in library. There it is. And there we go. It's already part culled. I've green labeled this folder already before. And if I want to go back to the collection, rather than jumping panels, I right click on an image, go to collection. And there it is. There is the collection. I can now close the folder. There's the collection I'm in. So immediately I'm working a bit smarter, not harder. That's a saying I say a lot. Now, if I wanted to, I could create a smart collection. And the great thing about smart collections is as you change the status of something, add ratings, add picks, add keywords. It updates the smart collection. So we're going to go picked, blue tit, um, oops, caps lock is on. So let's retype that for you. Pick, picked, blue tit, blue tits, okay. And I'm going to say these are flagged, yes, but they're in this collection. So you go plus, click source collection contains or you can change it contains all words but I'm going to go blue tits okay so what now this smart collection is going to look in this standard collection for any picked images and press done and I get the little cog so it's smart and there they are so I've got four in there at the moment just to show you it works if I go back to the eight and I'm going to mark that one as a black flagged so this image now is a black flag, third one. I've only got three images in there. So it's working a little bit smarter. I've got all these options. Um, and I can do lots of different things with these. So this smart collection, I want to edit these now, but I'm gonna edit them in a particular way. But I want to keep a copy of them. So I'm gonna go plus, Create a collection and blue tip edits. Okay, it's going to go into my birds collection. I'm going to include the selected pictures and I'm going to make a virtual copy. 
So there we go. So we've now got another collection of virtual copies. And if I wanted to share these, I could just go right click, share in Lightroom. And it's now syncing to the cloud. So now I could go to my quick develop panel and I could just apply a, a preset quickly. Let's uh, make them black and white. Okay. And that I've now got my original. There's my six images. There's my virtual copies because they're picked. They're in the picked um, smart collection. There is the, the edits that I've just done but I'm also sharing them and I can make them public if I wish. So I've got lots of versatility. Now, the great thing about it is once I finish with this project, I can just either close down the collection set and they hide away, or I can delete them, but I'm not deleting the images. I'm only deleting the collections. So in my commercial catalog, my collection list goes on and on and on and on. And this is why I use one, images. Two, my support group on a Monday night, lightroommonday.com. Most weeks I host a live Lightroom support group where we come together, we look at a theme, a task, and answer your random questions and answers. So, and I create collections. So <clears throat> here I've got work in progress. Okay, so these are images that are currently I'm working on. And I'm saving my screen real estate by expanding and reducing my collections. So I've got different, and I want them in these orders. So I go one, two, and three, they're in these orders. Okay, four are all my images in the cloud. Okay, so that one of a bird that I synced, what I would normally do in my commercial, I'd bring that down and put that into that folder to say that it's syncing in the cloud. So I now know that all my folders in that collection set are synced in the cloud. Immediately I know they're all there. And that's how I've got over half a million images in the cloud. Because if you sync from classic to Lightroom, they don't count towards your storage because they're a smart preview, not the raw file. Okay, so I have all my collection, all my images I have in a folder called LR Cloud, and I sync them, and I know they're all there. And if I just untick, it stops syncing them, and then I move them. So if I tick unsync, there we go, stops syncing to Lightroom. I then drag that back to the bird. So I put them together. Okay, so it's a methodical way. But my options are so, so vast. This is why I host the workshop all about collections, library, module, develop module, individual. And we learn each module and work in practice with a strategy and a workflow. So there we go. Folders, four things. Importing, culling the folder, marking the folder that it's culled, deleting and if you have to move, move. They're the four things. Everything else we do in a collection because we don't have to jump backwards and forwards panels. We have lots of different options. We can create a collection. We can share. I could turn around and say, just to give an example, I want to right click, duplicate this copy, this collection. Okay. But I actually want to take that image out. So I've now just deleted that one image and I've only deleted the preview from the collection i haven't deleted the file if i go back to the original there it is there's the original virtual copy and if i go to there's the original file okay so all my options are open i can create virtual copies but the thing i was going to show you was if i wanted to i could just share that one collection with somebody not this collection so let's say you had some holiday pictures some for the family but some for friends you'd have a collection with them all in there, and then you just select the ones ones that you wanted to go to your families and ones you wanted to go to your friends in your collection, and you could share those collections. But they're all within this collection set. Now, the golden nugget is these collections are accessible from your phone. So you can create a collection, share it in the cloud, which is why I have this LR Cloud 
collection set and they sit on your phone they don't take up storage because they're previews and you can just literally just show them to friends and family when you're out and about or somebody wants a picture you can share that image with them from your phone or your tablet or any web browser your computer doesn't need to be switched on and these are the things that we look at in our, my workshops and my support group on a Monday evening. I hope today was of help to you. If it is, please subscribe. If you've got a question, leave it in the comments. Give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to check out my classes, my live in person or on Zoom classes, please visit learnlightroom.co.uk. And to the side of me is my playlist for my Lightroom Classic Quick Tips. I hope you have a great day. You stay safe. I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.